Professor Charles Saludo is sworn in as new governor of Anambra State in a low-key event. And May Malabuni is back as the head of the All Progressive Congress APC as he cancels the party's NEC meeting fixed for Thursday by Abubakar Bello. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anakong. Governor Willie Obiano, the outgoing governor of Anambra State, bowed out of office today after completing the constitutionally allowed two terms of four years each. Now, in his place, Professor Charles Saludo will be sworn in, or has been sworn in, as the new governor. Saludo, who won the November 6, 2021 governorship elections on the platform of the All Progressive Grand Alliance, APCA, has already given the people of the state a glimpse of what his administration would look like as he had a quiet swearing-in ceremony that involved just a few people. This decision didn't, however, thrill some residents of the state capital as some of them expressed sadness at the arrangements, describing it as a strange one in the political history of the state. Well, joining us to discuss this and more is Vincent Unyekwelu, he's corporate, a corporate governance expert, and Achike Chude, who's a political analyst. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Good evening, Nigerians. Great. Uh, Mr. Chude, I'm going to start with you because um, um, you were there monitoring the elections that brought um, Governor Saludo into office. Now, um, before um, he was sworn in, he had put together a very interesting panel, a uh, transition committee, rather, uh, that would lay the grounds for his getting into office officially um and a lot of people you know applauded some of those people that made up that made up that list the likes of the former minister for education the likes of chidi odinkalu um uh, so many other interesting people who made that list and today um he gave a very very in-depth speech um laying out all the things and the plans that he has for a number of people but let's start by looking at the man himself and how he intends to run this office? Well, I, I think um, um, Achuho Masoludo hit the limelight when he was uh, given one of the best um, high-profile jobs in the country. Uh, that is uh, the governor of uh, the Central Bank by the, I think, the Basunjo administration. And uh, one thing he did was that um, uh, he, of course, apart from the fact that he's articulate and that uh, he seems to understand uh, the financial terrain, as a governor of the central bank, he was uh, also a very bold and uh, forthright uh, person. Uh, if you remember the reforms that uh, he did undertake, uh, how he was able to also uh, uh, recapitalize uh, the banking sector because he felt that going forward, the kind of uh, banking that needed to be done in a country the size of Nigeria, that uh, you needed banks that are uh, you know, very well capitalized to, uh, to undertake uh, the job of uh, uh, ensuring the kind of uh, investment that will lead Nigeria to progress. And so he was not uh, afraid to step on, on toes, and he did step on toes, uh, you know, in the course of uh, his, uh, um, his uh, ex experience or performance as uh, the central bank, uh, you know, governor. And um, of course, uh, he, this is not the first time he will be running for governor of Anambra State. This is, I think, the third time. And as they will say, third time lucky. Uh, obviously, he had a lot of uh, the former governor believing in him. Like somebody uh, said recently, that uh, Obi and not carefully chose somebody that would be better than him. And of course, uh, we, we do know that uh, the mark of leadership is not just uh, the mark that you have left uh, in power when you were, in, you know, when you were maybe in government, perhaps as a leader or a president. But uh, the successor that uh, comes after you is also uh, indicative of uh, the kind of uh, person you are. Uh, so there is that hope, there is that belief that um, uh, Soludo uh, would live up to the billing, that he will live up to the hopes and expectations of uh, the people of Anambra State. Mm -hmm. Because it is very clear, ultimately, at the end of the day, that um, a lot of people are looking closely at his leadership in Anambra State. 
and that they are hoping they've invested so much hope in Soludo. You can see how the people of Anambra State came out. Though we had them uh, uh, low number uh, during the, uh, the election itself, but at least uh, the fact that he was able to win in the, in the manner that he did uh, showed truly that those who voted for him believed in him and believed that there was going to be uh, a change for the better in Anambra State. So he's a man uh, that uh, is principle that has shown it to a very large extent. He's also a man that is very bold, uh, that is uh, willing to take the bull by the horn. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are those who have accused him of some level of uh, arrogance. Uh, I, I hope that uh, he should know that, um, of course, he's not a politician. This is the very first time he will take uh, the biggest stage of his life in politics. And so we hope that uh, he will be in a position to do the necessary compromise that is needed uh, for him to be successful as a governor, but not uh, not compromise that is fundamental uh, that would uh, prevent him from achieving uh, some of uh, his objectives as a governor of Anambra State. Mm. Um, Vincent, let me come to you. Uh, you're not, you're a, a good governance advocate and you have lived in Anambra. Um, you moved back, obviously, to uh, be part of building back society. Now, let's, before we continue talking about the governor that just got inaugurated, let's talk about Governor Willie Obiano, um, he, he was quoted to say that a number of people asked for legacies and that he has given them monuments. Uh, and he also said something about leaving uh, a number of people in good hands. Now, something that's worthy of note is that Governor Willie Obiano was not a man that was open to the media. He hardly was ever in front of a, a you know a TV uh, or a camera, you know, talking. Uh, he always had somebody speak for him, even though he was a you know a very a, a good orator. But let's look at his legacies in Anambra State. Who better to talk about it other than you, who's lived there for a bit? Honestly, Governor Willie Obiano, the former, the immediate past governor of Anambra State, actually did excellently well. Being somebody who have who is from Anambra State, who still lives in Anambra State, even though I live in Abuja also. Governor Obiano left some legacy projects that Anambra State will never ever forget him for. Example, the Anambra International Cargo Airport. It's been there on the pipeline for decades. The Anambra State deserves to have an international airport or, or an airport of a sort at all, whether it's international or local, whatever you call it. So I think that project of the Anambra Airport was a big plus to him. Okay. And forever and ever, in the Anambra, we never forget him. Yes, you get critics that criticize him about the quality of work, that the airport is still not complete. The fact is that people are flying safely from that airport, people are arriving and safely from that to that airport, and it's well acknowledged to be running smoothly so far. Yes, I've used that airport a couple of times. I know they are still finishing projects like the escalators are yet to be done, but he did excellent with that airport. Big plus to him. With the International Conference Center also, a wonderful legacy project, and you must respect the man for that. He's done other projects, even though some will say that before he left office, that many of the local roads in Anambra State were in a very appalling position. Mm -hmm. And I think those critics, I'll respect them to that for that, because most of the roads in Anambra State are in a very poor position. And also some critics will talk about the issue of... Um, Touting in Anambra State because there's a lot of um, gang stars now in Anambra State that control affairs. Either they are the cartel of people that sell illegal lands that we call the land bandits. They become so powerful. They've made some money from sales of lands and they become an authority in their individual communities. Mm -hmm. We are some of them are even more powerful than the traditional rulers in those communities. So, but all in all, if I must give him where one is the lowest and ten is the highest. I'll happily give Governor Obiano a very good seven. He's he's run a good race, and I respect him for that. Over to Governor Saludo now. Let's talk about young people in Anambra State. I mean, I remember the last time I was talking to um, um, one of the chieftains of Ohanese Ndigbo Worldwide, and he kept insisting that Anambra has the highest number of billionaires. And I said, how has this translated in um, helping young people? Because th the truth is, um, these people uh, are the future of Anambra State. If these young people are not one way or the other 
uh, co-opted into whether it be entrepreneurship or whatever. You know what they say about um, idle hands, but how has, what policies have Governor yeah. William Obianu uh, put in place that would one way or the other grow the young people in Anambra? I would say to you that Governor Willie Obiano actually worked very closely with the youth in the sense, if you look at his regime, most of the SAs, we are people of 30-something years to 40-something years. Most of the SSAs, we are people of 30-something years, some are even in their late 20s. So I think he had a good relationship with the young people of Anambra, both male and female. He kind of empowered them, giving them some level of job experience to serve in the corporate sector. Many of them never had apart from university education, they never had a proper job employment that exposed them to the corporate politics of, of an establishment. So he gave them so much exposure. Thousands of them had an experience under him for eight years. Some of them became financially balanced. So I think he'd done well for that. When it comes to the issue of Anambra having the highest number of billionaires, I still have an issue about this empirical evidence. I need to get more information on how somebody can presume the Anambra has the highest number of um, billionaires, apart from just gloating or making or post, being boastful. I think Anambra State is, a, is an okay state. We should stop boasting about having the highest number of billionaires or whatever. We should be more humble. And then issue of policies. I think being in governance and being a leader are two different things. Because the people that surround Governor Obiano are unique to his achievements, mm. to his challenges, to his failures. The people that will surround Governor Saludo will also be unique to his victories and to his losses. So I think it's for Governor Saludo to actually look deep and get the right hands that will surround him. If he doesn't have the right people to surround him, they will mess him up because these guys are politicians. Those that will surround him are people that understand the game. He, he's, he's, a, he's an inexperienced politician yet. So he has to be very, very mindful that he must get people that will be loyal, that will be professional, and he must do something that we want him to do, to face the gangsters. There are so many gangsters that have made so much money from illegal means that want to be friends with Saludo. He should deal with people that are technocrats, people that are crime, that has crime-free records, not people that have made money from fictitious motives okay. or fictitious ways. So we can be able to record his victories. But right now, in the Anambra, I expected so much from him. And trust me, it's going to be a tough battle for him because of the high level of expectations from the Anambra. Let me come back to you, Mr. Um, Chude. It, it, it looks like um, the governor it has a lot on his plate. I mean, the expectations are high. Uh, again, looking at his precedents. Um, while he was campaigning, there was a, a time where people were hashtagging that he was going to turn Anambra into a Dubai of sorts. But let's look at his speech today. He started by talking about boosting local industries and products. Uh, he also talked about um, uh, the fact that he was going to um, reduce the loss of, you know, high profile things and make them low profile. He was more about um production being productive other than just making noise and we've seen him do that you know even with you know the events that was pretty low-key but let's look at that industry and you know local products issue um vincent just said something about him being careful about the people that he surrounds himself with uh, but then again he the people who would say that you know be, not being part of the establishment can be a plus for him because that way it might be able, he might be able to make some decisions that would be drastic without being afraid of who the godfather, what the godfathers would have to say. Well, let me just say that to a very large extent, Soludo has a personality that is different uh, from uh, and an experience that is different from uh, the experience of so many governor, governors in the country uh, because of his unique uh, background as former governor of uh, the Central Bank of uh, Nigeria, and so he's an economist. He's a first class. Uh, you know, um, uh, graduate uh, from the University of Nigeria and Suka in economics. Uh, he is somebody that has also received back a lot of international awards from international institutions because of what, uh, you know, uh, of his achievements as governor of CBN. And so there is a lot of, a lot at stake in the Soludo, uh, uh, you know, Soludo as a governor of uh, Anambra State. And, um, and, and what is critical is that a lot more people uh, if, if, if Soludo fails, 
then it will be difficult for people, for Nigerians to begin to make a case for people with the kind of pedigree that uh, Soludo has. Okay. That is why the expectations are, are exceedingly, uh, you know, uh, uh, very high. So we hope that he does succeed. Of course, he understands, you know, economic dynamics. He understands the importance of, uh, of uh, the financial market, the financial system. He understands the importance of the uh, production. And that is why, uh, he, you know, he set up um, uh, a, a, a committee uh, to work out a blueprint of uh, for how, uh, you know, the governance of Anambra State would be in the next uh, four years. And of course, you know the kind of people he put into that committee. Obvious uh, equestrian, you know, uh, former head of uh, the Bureau for Public uh, uh, Enterprises, um, and, and uh, you know, so many other people that... Um, that are quite knowledgeable, a lot of people with great pedigree and credibility in the country, people involved in the uh, in economic and the financial sector. And so it is hoped that, um, on the, and then again, even the uh, low-key uh, inauguration that he did today is in tandem, is in line with what he said about uh, what is, you know, the kind of governance that he will bring to Anambra State. Okay. Of course, he talked about uh, the Akwete. In one of the occasions, he wore Akwete. And Akwete is uh, this fabric that is made in, um, it, it, you know, uh, one of the communities or the towns in Anambra State. He said he was going to give it a uh, global attention, uh, you know. And so uh, production, economic dynamics are important because the only way he can pull the people of Anambra State out of poverty, uh, you know, and uh, increase the level of wealth for the average Anambrian is through, you know, productive en endeavor as well as uh, through, you know, buying and selling. Of course, uh, uh, the Igbos generally are known uh, for their dexterity in, um, in trade. And uh, when you look at the entire Southeast, you find out that uh, it is the Anambra, people of Anambra State that tend to dominate even beyond, you know, Anambra State. So they are entrepreneurs and uh, they know what it means to be involved, involved in uh, trade. And then again, one of the things he said, the signpost of uh, what he, he wants to do is the fact that he said, that uh, well, the state, uh, you know, uh, official vehicles will be exclusively, uh, you, you know, innocent, you know pro produced by innocent motors. And that is, that is very good because what that means is that uh, he's going to encourage uh, 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 employment and then that would also lead to a boost in, in, you know, at innocent and of course increase their capacity for as long as he continues to have a, you know, patronage at that level. So he is uh, somebody uh, that uh, knows that um, uh, uh, all eyes are on him. But it is beyond an embrace because if he succeeds, you can imagine what is going to happen in the rest of the Southeast if Soludo is able to succeed. Now he's going to galvanize people from other parts of the Southeast who have not been happy with the kind of political elites that they have had since 1999 to date. Uh, you know, and so that will compel the uh, people from other parts of the Southeast to look for the kind of person that Anambra State has been able to produce as a governor. Mm -hmm. And beyond that, if he makes a success of it in his first four years, there is that possibility that the same model will be looked out for in other parts of the country. And then before you know it, you begin to have progress, you know, from one part of the country to the other. And Nigeria solely needs good, you know, political leadership in all of the states. And so I, 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 and then again, but most importantly, again, he knows that development cannot be done in the absence of peace and so that's why in his speech he talked about about um, about uh, the violence the ongoing violence in Anambra state and called for a stop in the you know in the violence that he was going to commit his uh, energy and time to ensure that uh, that the level of violence in Anambra state will be reduced minimally and then he did well by paying you know um, uh, honor to the three police members so that lost their lives as uh, sometime last year uh in, in you know uh in his company when yeah. his, his uh, convoy was attacked and i think that that was uh, fantastic for him because he showed somebody who uh, is not oblivious of what is going on around him so we we hope he's going to succeed because the destiny of the people of Anna Brestet will, will be dependent on what he has done and besides his predecessors have also done well uh Peter B. Uh, for even in Gigi, before before you know Peter B. in Gigi did well and set the template for on which uh, Obi Peter B. was was able to run his governorship and then you have Obi no? So there has been a steady progression uh, mm -hmm. in Anambra State in terms of improvement and so we hope that in fact it is expected that Soludo will out will, will out you know will, will eclipse 
all the other achievements that the, his predecessors had 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 achieved you know before him i'm curious um i mean the question's been playing in my head all evening um can governor charles chukuma saludo beat the establishment because no matter how great a person is you still have to deal with the establishment anywhere in the world especially in a country like nigeria where politics is uh, that of godfatherism I'm, I'm not necessarily saying that you know there's a big godfather somewhere in an amber state but there is the establishment and for someone who is coming from where he is coming from into the political mud permit me to use that word how possible is it that he'll be able to beat the establishment is yes, that, I, is, is that, is that for me? Or? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask um, you know, the same question to um, Vincent, but I'd like for you to answer it first. Yes, I, I, well, I, I think that that is the issue. And I'm glad you're asking this question because, I mean, it is the reality that uh, you have all kinds. If people have always made the, the, uh, the statement that um, the, the, the politicians are not really as bad as uh, Nigerians make them out to be, that the civil servants are worse. And uh, we, we've had that several times, that if you know what goes on uh, in the civil service, that the politicians, when they come in, they know nothing. It is the civil servants that introduce them uh, to some of uh, the things that uh, they do in later years. And that is, uh, you know, by, I mean, in terms of uh, corruption. But I, we, we, and I think Peter uh, will be most especially also faced that, that conundrum. But he had a way around it. In most cases, when he wanted to get things done, and he did not get satisfactory answers from uh, the civil service about how it should be done. He went beyond the civil, the civil servants and then went directly to the people concerned. Like the issue of schools, we know how Peter Obi was able to turn around the educational you know, establishment in Anambra State and how Anambra State moved from his previous position to first uh, in Nigeria when it comes to you know, external examinations like JAM you know, and uh, Wayek and NEPU. And, and so, uh, he went directly to the schools. And of course, people will tell you that uh, it's also illegal and it was wrong. He did not follow procedure and the rest, but it worked for him. Uh, you know, and so uh, it is one of the things that uh, Soludo has, has to do. The civil service can be very, very powerful, and they have the ability to frustrate even the best in, you know, intentions of a government. And so he must look for, and that was why, why I talked about you know, him also having the right kind of uh, temperament, also having the nuance and the ability uh, to go around the civil servants, work with them whenever you know it is possible for you to work with them, and then uh, when they look for ways to go around some of the obstacles that they will deliberately put on your path. Because if you succumb to the dictates of the civil service, then ultimately at the end of the day, it is only your goal. Because it, you know this administration is going to be called the Soludo administration the next four years. So if he leaves without achieving much, it is going to be said that that you know the Soludo administration of between this period and that period was a, was a failure. Mm. So when he realizes that that you know uh, is a stigma that he would want to avoid, then he will do as as much as possible to ensure that he's able to handle the, uh, the establishment and then put them where they should belong. Okay, quickly, Vincent, um, because I have another question that I want both of you to answer before we get out. Uh, but Vincent, how, same question, how certain are we that uh, the governor will be able to fight the establishment, especially in terms of plugging loopholes where these so-called people in the establishment benefit from? Knowing who he is, he will have to do that, but how will he survive it? That's a fantastic question. Now, if you talk about the practicalities of the big establishments in Anambra State, being somebody who is always on ground, number one big establishment is the, the pit walls. We call them the pit walls, P-I-T, the pit walls. Basically, what the pit walls mean is the leaders of transport system in Anambra State. So the leaders of the Okada Riders Association those that manage the parks where the Okada riders operate from, the leaders of the Kekena Pepe Association, those that manage the parks where those Kekena Pepe operate from, the leaders of the shuttle bus operators, those that manage the parks where the shuttle buses operate from, the leaders of the bus unions, those that manage the parks where the buses operate from, and on and on, even the TIPA, the trailers. So 
this is a very big establishment that has so much financial strength and whether you want physical or whether you want it spiritual or whether you want it biological can he manage them he deal with them and also there are other big establishments that what we call in our nature at the head bridge you have this beautiful wonderful union of pharmaceuticals those that deal in pharmaceutical drugs highly licensed professionals these guys are billionaires you cannot just go into a war war in head bridge and mess around with them and get away with it huh. can he face them so i think uh. these are wonderful unions that he can cooperate and collaborate and work with in peace uh. but he needs to work with them he should not fight them uh. okay well, finally, we all saw the video that um, made, um, in fact, it went viral this afternoon, where we saw the wife of the outgoing governor in a, uh, a little bit of drama with the wife of uh, the late Ojuku. Um, for a ceremony as big as this, um, everyone watching nationally, maybe even internationally, uh, what did you make of that little drama that turned into something very embarrassing today? I'll start with you, Mr. Chude. Yeah, well, you just you just uh, described it as embarrassing, extremely very embarrassing. Uh, it also it shows uh, the hubris in some of us human beings. Uh, the, it shows uh, our smallness and uh, you know and narrowness of minds. And because this is not something that should have happened at that place or any other place. These are mature people. These are adults. And the occasion is supposed to be a very sober occasion. Uh, you, you know. Um, again, uh, you know, the, I mean, the, 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 there is this saying that uh, good news, uh, the bad news sells, uh, sells, and it sells very fast, and that is what we have seen. We, we, there was a monumental event in Anambra State, but a very small, you know, event that should be innocuous at best, you know, overshadowed the entire event and took the shine from the inauguration to the extent that even Soludo had to make a mention of that, and then he had to apologize. Uh, to the people of Anambra State and those who had shown keen interest and had high expectation, you know, for the inauguration. So I think it was a very, very embarrassing moment. And uh, I think the principal personages, especially uh, the person that is supposed to have caused all of this furore, uh, you know, should uh, you know hang their heads in shame. Mm. It is something that we did not need to see at all. Mm. Vincent. Honestly, I think we need to overlook that tiny, tiny incident that happened. And I think what Governor Saluda did was to show great leadership. That wasn't part of his initial plan. His first plan in office was to go to Okopo, a, a suburb in Oni, to go and pay them a courtesy visit and show them that he's going to support. That was one of his electoral promises, that if he wins, his first assignment will be good, going to Onecha, Okopo, a suburb. And what he did today was a big sign of leadership. He was able to manage the handle the two parties. And we shouldn't make big out of this thing. These are our mothers, our sisters, our wives. Nobody is perfect. So we shouldn't play politics with them. We should just overlook it and focus on the wonderful promises of Governor Saludo. We shouldn't worry about what our sisters and wives have done. They are human beings. Nobody is perfect. I still give respect to Oso DMA. The wife of Governor Obiano, I give respect to Bianca, the wonderful wife of our. But was it the time and place event. for that event? As much as you'd like to want to wish it away, it's not going away. It's trending. It's trending over the fact that the governor, a governor, was sworn in today. A governor that the Anambarians had voted on mass for. It's not making headlines as much as these two highly placed women in a fist cuff the at governor, that inauguration. The the what, governor was safely what, exa in what example is that setting for those who are watching them? Because you just call them mothers and sisters. The, the example is there is for everybody watching to know that we need to learn how to overlook little skirmishes and move on with our lives. We shouldn't throw all our energy into what happened there. These things happen. It's just okay. because it happened at a particular kind of event, a showing an event, and it's because of the wife of the governor, of the former governor who was involved, the wife of the current governor was not involved. Mm. The two women that was involved are not political. They are not holding any political post in the gov in Governor Saludo's uh, 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 regime. 
So I think they are now normal right. and embryos. Normal right. human beings. I don't like any commissioner or any appointment. So we just so we just overlook them okay. and focus that we have. All right. who is going to deliver things to Anambra State. Just overlook it and let's move on. All right. Well, I want to say thank you. Uh, Vincent Zonyekwelu is a corporate governance expert and Achike Chude is a political analyst. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, we watch and wait and see how the governor of Anambra kicks off his administration. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. Uh, we'll take a quick break. And when we return, we'll be talking about the... A uh, drama that uh, happened within the APC at the national level because May Malabuni is back and it seems he's undoing Belo's plans. Stay with us.